Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Roger E. Carlson Fieldhouse for CTN's live coverage of boys high school basketball. Tonight, a Northwest Suburban Conference showdown as the Cardinals host the Anoka Tornadoes. And how interesting that we should be here for the rematch. We were there for the initial meeting between these two teams, and since that time, uh, the Cardinals have seen some departures, and their season has really struggled to recover. On the other side, that win over the Cardinals really got the Tornadoes going. They've won six of nine since that game. Yeah, Cardinals obviously made some changes and they've become a younger team. And, you know, Coach O'Gorick says this is a team that, that really young players that work hard come to play every day. And so it's kind of been some growing pains for them. And as far as Anoka goes, Coach O also said that uh, Coach Jefferson's done a really nice job. Feels that this may be the best Anoka team in quite a while. Well, and they have some depth. Reagan Reeder, we will talk about a lot, although he actually was not a huge factor uh, against the Cardinals in the first meeting. They had four different guys uh, who were in double digits, and Padani has really been playing well the last couple of games. He stung them for a couple three three-pointers last time. Yeah, he's had over 20 points in, in his last two games, including 26 and a very close loss to Andover. He's just the, last night. Just last night. He's the point guard. He's leading this team. And so Coach Jefferson said, yeah, we really go by a number of players, but he has been the guy to pick us up, and they're looking for a big night from him as well. On the other side, after the loss to Anoka, there was the third straight for Coon Rapids. They had a couple of notable departures, guys that decided to leave the program. They needed to find new leaders, and one they already had they knew was a leader stepped up his game even more. Yeah, Jackson Hatworth's been playing really well, averaging about, uh, about 11 points a game and four boards. Big night his last game in the loss to Blaine, 23 points, nine rebounds but he's been a great shot, a player from the on the perimeter. They're looking for him to continue to be a scorer here tonight. In the first 11 games, which includes that first game against Anoka, he had double digits just three times, averaged about seven points per game. Since then, he's been in double digits in seven of their eight contests and he is averaging 15 points per game. So definitely has stepped up to try and shoulder some of this load. And they are looking to get off another long losing streak, but a big challenge coming from Anoka. Yeah, they're glad they're here on their home court. Big crowd here tonight. You know, look for a youngster like Jackson Young also to contribute well here tonight. And they know that they have an opportunity. You know, if they can, if they can keep them off the boards, I think it's going to be really important for the Cardinals, and they've got an opportunity to get a win here. Yeah, we'll talk a, a lot more as the game goes on about the Cardinals. Uh, they don't have a lot of size, so rebounding can be a, uh, an issue at times, but they are trying to sweep that aside and keep from being swept by the Tornadoes. Anoka Coon Rapids tips off next on CTF. Fieldhouse just about ready to tip it off between Coon Rapids and Anoka. Jackson Hetler and the Cardinals. It's been a bumpy road since they last saw the Anoka Tornadoes. They've gone one and eight since that contest. Yeah, that one bit win was a big one over Cambridge. But uh, you're right, they've uh, they've been trying to figure some things out and what they need to do here. And uh, it, it'll be interesting. Anoka coming off that emotional loss to Andover last night. We'll see if fatigue plays into any account. Floating jump shot good for Trey Borchers, and that starts the scoring for our contest. And then Borchers going to be called for the foul going back the other way. You know, Borchers, they have they have a couple of guys, uh, Duanoka, that, that just want to trouble the, the ball handler. We'll see that uh, defensively as this game unfolds. Jackson Young had it roll in and out. Reader on 
the rebound. Yeah, good. Good. I like the I like the thought. Good wraparound, but just couldn't get it to fall. Reader drives to the baseline, kicks it out. Three pointer for Padani won't fall. Rebound tip controlled by Belpedia. When Coon Rapids coming off a, a very strong game against Blaine on Tuesday, lost just by a handful of points. And uh, Blaine number three or four in section seven right now. Yeah, they were disappointed they, that they uh, couldn't get the win. But that uh, was great effort from the guys. Blocked down low from Holheisel, but Hetmore finds room and knocks down the three. Oh, we, we talk, puts Coon Rapids in front. We talked about Jackson at the opening that uh, he's going to need a big game and hits that big three to start it off. Borchers looking to answer. This one's off the back iron. Holheisel tips it, gets control. He draws the foul on Jackson Young. Yeah, so defensively, they see him collapse around that man with the ball. Jackson Young, the team leader in points per game, a little under 11 and a half. Off the miss by Reeder, the rebound lost out of bounds. It'll be Coon Rapids' ball. Jerry Freeman watched in the backcourt by Cooper. Well, in last game, they tornadoes drive by Freeman, but he's fouled by Hoheisel, and we'll go to the line issue two. Anoka got a couple of early three-pointers from Donald Pry and another from uh, Padani yep. that gave them the early lead, and then they went on a 13-0 run, and by the midway point of that first half, uh, Things started to fall apart by, for the Cardinals. They did, they did, and that was an unfortunate loss for them. And, and as we talked about, then, then changes occurred within the program. Freeman able to hit one and two. Cardinals up 4-2. Danny works his way across, hands it off to Reeder, back into the paint. Looking for room is Cooper. The little scoop won't go. Hetward gets the rebound, hands it off to Young, and he will carry down floor for the Cardinals. Cuts to the middle, into the corner for Freeman. Freeman, bothered by Cooper, stops up, leaves it for Young on the baseline. Belpedio blocked by Reeder, able to regain control. Up top, three-pointer for Hetward is good. And he was a ways outside. I was watching him in warm-ups, hitting from consistently from that exact spot on the floor. He has six of the seven points for the Cardinals. Borchers is going to get the foul on Young, and that's going to be his second early. And I'm Cardinals wanted that uh, to be a charge. Hit we're spotting up from way downtown, hitting that one. Well, if you notice, Joe, they've uh, they've installed the shot clocks here at the nest well, they for had to, next year. They had to fix the backboard arm well, they anyway. Yes. There it is. That will take effect next season. That'll be interesting. I remember a Coon Rapids Blaine boys basketball game once where uh, I think Blaine held it for about 15 minutes. <laughs> Uh, it was Coon Rapids that was doing the holding. Was it, I thought it was Blaine. No, no. It was Coon Rapids that was doing the holding. That was uh, that was when they had Patrick O'Brien on the, the Bengals, the seven-foot center. Nice drive he, to the basket for Anthony Belpedio. He was pretty good, Patrick O'Brien. He's all right. A steal, a breakaway for Hetwer, and he lays it up at the other end. We see a lot of energy early from Coon Rapids, and I love seeing that. And they have the early 11 for a lead. A big block down low for Connor Jordan. Back the other way comes Belpedio, and he'll lay it up and in. And a timeout for Anoka early. Coach Jefferson not happy with the defense from his squad. And, you know, they're obviously the, uh, the ties here that Coach Jesse Jefferson has was on Coach Mike Gorg's staff before taking over 
as the head coach for Noka, but just a nice job by Belvidio splitting that defense and protecting the ball. Yeah, and protecting the ball correct. And, and that's getting coach, it through the cylinder. Yep. Most importantly. But yeah, not uh, the effort he wanted to see from his team that maybe came in very confident they would just uh, run over the Cardinals, but the Cardinals clearly not going down without a fight. Well, the coach Jefferson told me today that he felt his squad's bigger, faster, and stronger right now than Coon Rapids. An opportunity to talk to Sean Jelly Dog Smith before the game, now a, uh, a member of the coaching staff. He finished college, and Coach Jefferson asked if he'd like to come out and lend a hand and coach, and it's great to see him. Marcus Rask as well, got an opportunity to talk to him. Some alumni here. So a 13-4 lead for Coon Rapids early in this contest. And Anoka a little more deliberate on the offensive end this trip as well. Borchers working up high on the left wing and then lost the handle as he went to pass. Freeman the other way to Japri Palmer. He lays it up and in. Yeah, Japri Palmer coming out getting minutes with uh, Jackson Young on the bench with two personals. Nice bucket there. Good, good, good job off transition. Eight unanswered points for Coon Rapids. They have an 11 point lead. We're just four minutes into the game and Hetwer is going to get the call here is got a little contact yeah. and Dre Ellis went to the ground. Ellis just a freshman. He, we saw quite a bit of him in the first contest. Inbound goes to Ibekwe. Afi Ibekwe working against Palmer into the corner. The three-pointer on the way, but short for Ellis. Ibekwe gets the rebound back. His pass tip, but controlled by Padani, trying to get it back into the corner for Ellis, but the Cardinals come up with the takeaway. Another good defensive play by Coon Rapids. Jerry Freeman gets the pick. Swatted away out of bounds by Reagan Reader. Yeah, he's 6'7. He's got some height to him, is Reagan Reader. You can be a little looser on defense when you're that long. Yeah, absolutely. Hatwork, quick shot off the inbound, another three pointer. Well, he's feeling it. And when he's feeling it, the Cardinals are playing well. He's got 11 of the 18 Cardinal points here in the first half. Borchers drives, his finger roll comes up short. Jordan the rebound to Freeman, and now Jordan across midcourt and hands it back. Up top, Jabri Palmer a little fake, drives, great dish. Jordan blocked from behind by Reeder on the second chance. That was a gorgeous pass it by was. Jabri Palmer. Drew three defenders and left it, and, and unfortunately, Jordan just a little too strong. Belpedio to inbound for the Cardinals to Japri Palmer, takes it up strong. Going down was Ibekwe, but no foul. Belpedio, though, is fouled along the baseline. It's going to go against Ellis. This will be Ellis's first, team third. His first person. Inbound goes to Connor Jordan, up top to Freeman. Right side, Hatworth into the post for Palmer again. Hatworth, quick three, this one won't fall. Rebound, Donald Pra knocked away and out of bounds. Again, quick hands defensively for Coon Rapids. Uh, got in there, unfortunately, they couldn't retain possession of the basketball. But nonetheless, uh, they troubled Anoka. Reader working against Jordan. Jordan! Oh, he got an awful lot of oh, ball. he certainly did. But he is called for the foul, and Reader will go to the line to shoot two. To be the first on Connor Jordan. His first team fourth. Coach O getting a little explanation from one of our officials. 
Borchers had the, the first basket of the ball game, and since then, the Tornadoes have not scored from the floor. Nope. Couple of points from Borchers at the free throw line. And as you see, Borchers headed to the bench for a breather. Reeder misses them both to pre Palmer with the rebound. Cardinals trying to keep their streak alive. Freeman runs around, but a, they're going to call a moving screen. Connor Jordan called for the offense of his second, and he'll come out. Tyjon Plowman Tate. Yeah, Plowman Tate, another one of the sophomores for the Cardinals. He's, he's got. Uh... Ellis worked his way into the paint, but his shot off the Mark Freeman tracks down the rebound. He's good for this program. He'll continue to grow. Plowman Tate from the corner for three comes up short. Ellis has the rebound for Anoka. Six minutes into the game, Padani driving and won't get it to go. Padani, a second chance, puts it in. 12 point lead for Coon Rapids. Japri Palmer at the top of the key. Left side for Plum and Tate. Back up top for Jeremy Hetworth. The Cardinals want to be patient, but it was a fast offense that really got them the lead. Palmer fights for the rebound, puts it back home. Yeah, I like the presence underneath. Did a really nice job of stepping back, creating a little space for himself. He's able to get the bucket. 14 point lead, 26 in favor of Coon Rapids. Padani throws it right off of Reeder's chest. It came right back to him, and Padani hits a little jump shot. So does Reeder get the assist, Joe? I <laughs> hit him right in the numbers. It did. And it came right back to Padani. That's short. Palmer's three-pointer well off the mark. Dave Emmy with the assist. Praise Jibinar into the game for Anoka. Borchers back in. He'll have the ball on the right side, finds the corner and scores. 2010. Delpedio driving, blocked by Padani. Down the line. And out of bounds. Good defensive effort from Peyton Padani. Belpedio waits across midcourt. Padani will go to the right. Into the middle. Borchers' little hanging curve is good. A nice feed to Borchers as he was able to move inside the lane. And Anoka's now cut the lead to eight. Japri Palmer kicks it out in the corners. Hetworth working against Borchers up top. Freeman trying to get away from Ellis. Finds some room. Three-pointer is good. Nice job. Jerry Freeman did a really nice job of, of giving him a little bit of a fake to allow himself to get some space. Padani drives right back at the Cardinals. He comes off the rim. Freeman on the run. Hatworth will stop and pop. That's in and out. The rebound by Padani gets it ahead to Pra. Pra to the lane. That shot won't go. Rebound bouncing around now controlled by Freeman. Freeman down the right side. Shot comes up short. That pass too far for Borchers and a turnover back to Coon Rapids. Fast pace back and forth, end to end basketball. Gavin Stevenson in for Coon Rapids. Well, if, if you want to run the floor and, and run a lot, you like to put those soccer players yeah, out there. Yeah, absolutely. They've got They're they, used to that. They are. Freeman working to the left side. Borchers all over him. Plowman Tate now. Watched by Pra. Running to the right, into the corner for Stevenson. 
Stevenson crossing over against Padani into the post. Palmer throws it up and in. Nice job by Palmer backing him down towards the basket. And he's an athletic player. He's able to move to his right and create the opportunity. Padani looking for some separation. The back way now finds some room. There's some contact, but no foul. And ball ends up out of bounds off the Cardinals. Another look at Japri Palmer. He's had a nice. He's had a nice start. Couple Absolutely. of minutes off of off of the bench. Inbound goes to Reagan Reader. Plowman Tate got a block. Well, Plowman Tate's listed at six one on the he's, roster. I think he's probably, I think he's probably a bigger. And again, he's Fortress just a Fortress shot player. is short, but Lauren rebound comes right back to him. Stripped as he went up, but Beckway able to recover and score for the Tornadoes. Jupree Palmer, shot wouldn't go, got his own rebound. This time it's good. I just love the hustle, the follow by Jupree Palmer. He's got eight. Yeah. Uh, definitely, I, I remember the way his brother played, and yep. I really liked it. And it was very similar, just hard-nosed, aggressive, great determination. Timeout, Coon Rapids. Coach O is going to take a bit, talk to his squad. Eight minutes exactly remaining in this first half. Nice, uh, nice crowd here. Good student section across the way. Eleven point lead for the Coon Rapids Cardinals. It's certainly not a lead you can just rest on. No. But uh, a lot easier to play when you're 11 up than 11 down. Much easier. Jackson Hetwer will inbound it for the Cardinals. It'll go to Connor Jordan. Turns and looks. Gets it back to Hetwer. Jackson Young back in. Pass got away from Plowman Tate, and the Cardinals turned it over. Yeah, unfortunately, just took his eyes off the basketball and, they, and lost, the, lost the handle. Beckway and Padani playing catch at the top. Oh, I'm sorry, that's Cooper. Beckway's in the corner. Padani, long three-pointer, comes up short. Borchers puts it right back up and in. Young waiting for the screen, gets it, got it back to Connor. Jordan had time, but... Uh, Waited a little too long. The pick and roll worked beautifully, and he just wasn't able to finish. Cardinals turned it over again. And again, that's that's youth and guys that were not expected to be in these positions at the beginning of the season, having to learn on the job. No, you have to learn on the job. Beckway, a quick three off the inbound, won't go. Palmer had Padani boxed out. Hetward controls and gets it ahead to Young. Young into the front court. Along the baseline is Stevenson, gave it back to Palmer. He's blocked by Reeder. Came right back to him. He's able to tiptoe the line and get a Padani on the run. Up top, Reeder. Drives, his shot comes up short. Borchers misses short. Beckway had it. Borchers, a chance off the glass, rang around the rim and out, and Stevenson will head up court for the Cardinals. 
Stevenson trying to run around Reeder, blocked away out of bounds. Yeah, Coach O'Gark was talking about, you know, we, we have to do a good job protecting, protecting the rim, and you saw three opportunities there from Anoka underneath, and, and the Cardinals uh, did a nice job of just making sure they troubled him, and they ended up getting that rebound. Inbound all the way to the backcourt for Gavin Stevenson, watched by Cooper. Crosses over, finds some room on the left side. Lost him again to the baseline. Good head fake. Kicks it back out. Hetwer and now Jabri Palmer at the top of the key. Palmer hands it off to Belpedio. Into the corner. Stevenson, another good head fake, but then lost it out of bounds. Yeah, just stepped on the line. Padani into the front court for Cooper, back to Padani. And now Jefferson took his eyes off the ball, but it came right back to him. Borchers for three, that's good. That's a big point, three-point shot for the Tornadoes. That cuts the lead down to six with uh, five and a half minutes remaining in this opening half. You know, most of this game has been played without Jackson Young because he went out early sitting on the bench with his two personals. Couple of fakes, found a little room, but Reagan Reeder was lurking behind him for another block. He's got three or four already. Oh, and Young's going to come out for Freeman. It does help when you're the tallest on the uh, floor by a good three inches. Inbound goes to Freeman. Three pointer is good. A good answer for the Cardinals. They needed the answer. Borchers an open luck for three. It's good. And he's heating up. He is. He's got 16. Delpedio tripped up. And the foul will go against Reagan Reader, his first. Reagan Reader is their, their leading scorer, yep. averages 13.9 a game, has yet to score tonight, held to just nine points in the first meeting. Freeman drives, trying to give it to Palmer, and Palmer wasn't ready. Jefferson comes up with it for the Tornadoes, and now Padani will run to the front court. Reader to the lane, hook shot won't go, follow won't go, tipped, missed by Cooper, Hetworth. Bounce pass ahead to Freeman. Freeman into the teeth of the defense, it won't go. Palmer gets the rebound, delays and scores. Yeah, good hustle down court by, by Japri Palmer because he's able to get right underneath the basket after the athletic miss by Jerry Freeman. Leads back to eight now. Borchers, another open look for three, and he knocks it down again. Yeah, he feels that Cardinals are going to have to come out and pressure him a little bit on defense. Capri Palmer answering at the other end. He has a dozen. Borchers had 19 points against the Cardinals last time. He's at 19 with three and a half minutes to go in the first half. Jefferson finds some room, blocked away out of bounds. Borchers blocked by Palmer and then got his own rebound. Freeman nearly had it stripped by Padani, but able to come away with it. Hetworth thought about the three, finds some room. The shot is off the mark, and a rebound out of bounds off of Borchers. Yeah, it's probably one that uh, he tried to readjust his shot, but probably one that uh, maybe he shouldn't have taken, fortunately. Well, I, and I thought he got contact from Chris Cooper on the shot and might have gotten three free throws, but... Padani sticks with it, steals the inbound to the other end. Borchers trailing for the basket.
underneath, Freeman gives it back to Japri Palmer. He takes it up and called for the offensive yeah. foul as Cooper takes the contact. That'll be the uh, seventh team foul, his first. And the Oscar goes to. But hey, if it works, three-pointer is good for Padani. And this is a two-point game. Palmer underneath to Belpedio. Blocked, got it back. Oh, that should be goaltending. Yeah, I don't know goal how pending. they missed that. And then a foul at the other end. And Coach Agoric in trouble, in danger of getting yeah, that's, a technical. Yeah, that was obvious goaltending. This is, I mean, that oh, is how, underneath, how is that underneath through the rim. That's uh, that was pretty obvious. So Chris Cooper will be at the line with a chance to tie the game for Anoka, who once trailed by 14 points. And how big a non-call. Would have been a four-point lead yep. instead. Cooper a chance to tie it from the free throw line. First one in and out. Coach Ogorek doing everything he can to yeah, he, restrain the emotion. He, he doesn't want to get tossed. Both in and out for Cooper. Rebound by Hetworth. Trying to get away from Borchers. Lost the handle on the ball. Waiting for Freeman. Freeman is foul. Well, we, you know, we knew this coming in, this is an opportunity to be a close game, and Cardinals had a nice, had a big lead early on, but give credit to Anoka for coming back and cutting into that lead. Cardinals now with 221 remaining in the opening half, a two-point cushion. Inbound goes to Belpedio. He's watched by Padani in the backcourt. Freeman trying to find room against Cooper. Gets a pick from Palmer. Sets up high on the right wing. Spins back toward the paint. And he travels. Donald Prow will check back in for Anoka. 2.06 on the clock. Timeout Cardinals. Clinging to a two-point well, lead. Clinging as it is, it looked like you know the Cardinals were gonna, gonna stay in control early on, but you know, uh, again, just not. Uh, I mean, Trey Borchers with 21 points. They they did. A, he's done. A, he's done a pretty good job of bringing him back, just pretty much on his own. Well, it, Padani has nine. Right. So between so the two of them, two of 30 of the 32 points. Who's got the other two points? They're from the How line. closely They're, have you been paying attention? No. No. I'm not sure. It was a follow. He scooped it up off the ground underneath the basket and scored. Affy Ibekwe. Oh, I didn't know there was going to be a test. So <laughs> I would have studied a little harder. Underneath to Reader Alley, oop, jump shot won't go. He gets the rebound back. He's oh. in the middle of four. The Cardinals tie him up. Oh, He's a, complaining that he doesn't get that's an easy, a foul. Well, that's an easy call to, on him. He uh, with the elbow. is uh, still on the ground. He's slow to get up. Well, and if if it's an offensive at the other end, uh, the elbow to the abdomen. Uh, Somewhat out of control by the big band. Yeah, absolutely. I would think personally, uh, <laughs> there was there was more contact there certainly than there was on the offensive called against Freeman. Well, you talked about a re reader, their leading scorer, you know, with one point, oh, he's with no points. Clearly, so he's very frustrated. Japri Palmer at the top of the key, looking right, hands it off to Belpedio, looking for a lane. Blocked away out of bounds. He felt he got contact. It's not the way the referee saw it.
Belpedio out of the corner. Up top for Freeman. Under 90 to go in the first half. Freeman in some trouble, got it back. Threw it to Belpedio, but blocked away out of bounds by Chris Cooper. Inbound goes to Palmer, up top, Belpedio. In the post, Palmer working against Reeder. Blocked away, Reeder saves it. Padani will slow and now get the Tornadoes into the offensive end. Cooper on the baseline, up top, Donald Pra all day for a three, and he knocked it down. Anoka has its first lead since it was two to one. Well, he talked about Pra. Pra had a pretty good game against them the first time. But a big three-point shot here late in the first half. Young looking for the answer, won't get it. Reeder. Wait, how? Come on. Come on. I, if you, you cannot call that one way. Japri Palmer is going to get a technical. Let's take another look at that. Off that miss. Well, and, and he kind of got him, but then Reeder clearly is holding his arm and pulling him along yeah. at that point. So I thought I thought Palmer definitely got, he did get got him up high. Absol absolutely. But you're right. Going for the ball, but then Reeder holding on to the arm. Oh, and he did. Reeder got a, got a technical. Oh, he did. Okay. Or a, oh, I, I don't know if they were oh, technicals. Or are they just unsportsmanlike both ways? Yeah. I think is how it was called. Well, then, then it's fair. <laughs> then it's fair. They, they get five minutes for fighting. Yeah, they got to go to the box. Pry driving, blocked away out of bounds by Japri Palmer. Three-pointer in and out for Ellis. Stevenson has the rebound for the Cardinals. Tipped away out of bounds by Borcher, who goes hard through a chair, but looks like he's able to survive unscathed. Young working against Borchers to the baseline. Reverse is good. 36-35, Coon Rapids. The first bucket uh, of the first half for Jackson Young is a big one. Driving, Padani able to drop it in just before the buzzer sounds. And Anoka will get to the locker room with a 37-36 lead. And uh, we will take the shortest of breaks and be right back with Cardinal head coach Mike Gorick right after this. Oh, he can't be happy. All right, Howie, take a look. Our opponents are on this side, and the Cardinals are over here. Where's the line of scrimmage? Uh, right here. Good. So obviously the Cards want to get the ball downfield anywhere over here, and the other guys are pushing back this way over here. So one strategy would take... Hey, Joe! What? Tic-tac-toe, I win! Impressive. <sighs> <laughs> at the Roger E. Carlson Fieldhouse. Halftime between the Cardinals and the Tornadoes. Anoka with a 37-36 lead. We're joined now by head coach Mike Ogorek. And coach, your team stormed to a 14-point lead early. What was working so well, and how do you get back to that? We're doing a good job defensively out of the gate, and we were handling their pressure. So we did that early. We got some nice looks, you know, and so we were in rhythm. Um, we also made some great hustle plays, you know, I think of Tony Belpedio, like a couple drives and a couple things keeping alive. Uh, then, you know, I don't know, there's a stretch where we just uh, fell apart a bit defensively, gave some early looks. And then it's also impacted us offensively as well. Like, we're rattled, we're just not, we're just not moving the way we need to offensively, and, and uh, they're taking advantage of it. Nice, uh, Coach, nice half for Japri Palmer. I thought he did a really good job athletically. You know, talk a little bit about that. And, and what do you do for Trey Borchers with 21 points? What do you do to stop him? Yeah, we got to guard him. I mean, they're going to try to get him some stuff. They're sending some flare screen action for him, you know. So we just got to stay 
we got to stay connected to him. He's hot. That's what we were saying, you know, in a timeout, too. We just got to, you know, we, we, we play a lot of shooters. It's just understanding, like, where he is and just understanding how to play him through screens. They're trying to get him open, and we just got to, uh, the man on him has got to be just alert and, and, and just, again, take away, chase him through, and, and um, just make those shots tougher. Pretty intense rivalry at all times. Some questionable officiating in the first half, adding to the emotions. How do you get your guys to keep the emotions in check for the final run? Yeah, sure. I mean, you got to control what you can control. You know, that starts on my end, too. You know, I got I got a coach's group, too. My job's coach. So we just got to control what we can control right now. That's going to be the message at halftime. Um, you know, it's, it's good. This is what a rivalry is about. You want high emotion. You want fun, tight game. So we're in it, and now it's just we got to execute, you know, all of us. All right. Well, thanks for being with us. Good luck the rest of the way. Thanks. And we will take a short break. Be back with first half highlights after this. You're watching live boys high school basketball on CTF. What? Nothing. Back at the Roger E. Carlson Fieldhouse, Anoka on top by one as we reach the break. It looked like the Cardinals might run away with this one, the, much the way that Anoka did in the opening the meeting. Jackson for Hetworth took the team on his shoulders early on. He had all 11 of his points in the first five minutes, helped him build an 18-4 lead. And you heard uh, Coach talk about Belpedio with a couple of big drives in that opening spurt. And you talked about Trey Borchers, 21 points in the first half. Uh, his team really struggling to find offense. And he kind of put them on his shoulders uh, for the majority of that first half. You talked about that young man as well, Jafri Palmer, who came off the bench and had a dozen points. Jerry Freeman, a big three-pointer late in the half. Uh, but Borchers always seemed to have the answer. Borchers had three three-pointers in the first half. Donald Pra hit a big three-pointer late in the half for Anoka that uh, helped them take the lead for the first time. And uh, then they trade a couple of baskets late and get to the locker room up by one. Yeah, Tornadoes have to feel pretty good, obviously, being up by one, because it looked in the beginning of the Coon Rapids, was, as, as we talked about, maybe going to control things, but they did a really good job of, of just hanging in there, not losing composure, where at times it could have happened that way, and they're able to come back and get that that uh, one-point lead at the break. Well, it, it's anybody's ball game as we uh, get ready for the second half. We hope to have a word with an OK head coach, Jesse Jefferson, in just a moment. More from the field house after this on CTF. Want to know the who, what, when, and where of Coon Rapids? Then follow CTN on social media. It's that simple. Whether it's Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, keep up with local news, sports, and events. And the people who make our community such a great place to live. So give us a follow, like, share, or subscribe. And always be the first to know what's up in Coon Rapids. That's CTN, helping you stay connected. Time at the Fieldhouse, Anoka, 37-36 lead over the Coon Rapids Cardinals. We're joined now by Tornado head coach Jesse Jefferson. And, and Coach, uh, you had to take a timeout early in that contest as the Cardinals kind of jumped on your guys. What was your message to the team in that huddle? I'm not really sure if we were just sleeping the night before. We had a really good game against Amador last night, and it was close and it was emotional. So it seemed like we were kind of just slow to come out. And um, I don't know, I didn't like our effort, so uh, I just kind of emphasized that we need to come to the party, otherwise Coon Rapids is here, so I don't know, just trying to lock in so we weren't the only ones matching the energy. Coach, I thought your team did a good job of responding after falling down by about 14. 
you know, and, and that message, obviously, you, what you said reached out to them. Uh, talk a little bit about what you said to your squad here as we start this second half. I mean, as simple as we just had to come to the party. I mean, uh, if we play with the same effort that Kurab has played with in the beginning, then um, I believe we have a better team. I believe that we're bigger, faster, stronger. We have to impose our will a little bit and make sure that we uh, come out on top. All right, well, thanks for joining us. Good luck in the second half. We'll take one more break, and we'll be back with that. Howie, do you know why fish are so bad at volleyball? Because they're afraid of the net. Why me? Why couldn't the volleyball player cross the road? There were too many bumps. <laughs> Why was Cinderella kicked off the team? Because she ran away from the ball. I hate you. Coach Mike O'Gorick getting his team fired up for the second half. They need to come out, as Coach Jefferson talked about, with the kind of energy they did to start the game. Uh, you know, it kind of took the tornadoes by storm when we got started, but clearly they, they matched the intensity, especially Trey Borchers. Uh, he was absolutely en fuego. <laughs> Cardinals start with the ball in the second half. Belpedio up top and around to Jerry Freeman. Freeman a little pick and roll. Another block for Reeder, but Freeman is there for the foul. Coon Rapids back in front. And we saw that in the first half. Coon Rapids do, does a nice, did a nice job following misses. Go to the alley-oop. Reeder able to tip it home and get the foul on Young. That'll be his third. And a three-point opportunity for Reagan Reeder. Uh, he hit the heart. He hit the floor hard. Hopefully he's okay. He wants to stay in. But he, he is gonna. He's gonna come out with that third personal. Yeah, it's unfortunate too. It, it occurred right here in the beginning of the second half, and we talked about it. He missed. Uh, he missed time with those two personals in the first half, and. Now, uh, after a hard fall, as trainer Jeremy Shepard's going to make sure he checks him out, make sure he's okay. And at long last, the Tornado's leading scorer is on the board, but Reader's free throw attempt rims out. The Cardinals get the rebound. Hetworth left side, pulls back for the jump shot. It rolls across the top of the rim. Reader has the rebound, lays it off to Padani. Down court, Borchers for three, in and out. Rebound, Belpedio. Yeah, we saw him unconscious from beyond the arc in that first half, but this is his first attempt. Oh, he's got to, yeah, couldn't, couldn't plant the foot, and he dragged it, and obviously that is a uh, easy call for a travel. That one just thrown away. Oh, it was tipped. Yeah. Which is why Reeder made no effort to try and get it back. Padani gets some room. His three-pointer won't fall. Hetworth has the rebound underneath for Coon Rapids. Met by Padani as he gets across midcourt. Hands it off to Belpedio going back to the right. Belpedio is going to drive. His shot won't fall. Japri Palmer. An athletic rebound, a good move back up and in, and he puts it down. Yeah, he did a really nice move of keeping his foot planted to make sure he did not travel. Borchers cuts back into the corner. Padani to the paint, outside to Cooper. Baseline jumper is off the side of the backboard. 
And tipped to Hatwer, who smartly got both feet planted in bounds before touching the ball. Freeman is bumped by Cooper. He'll go to the line, issue three. Yeah, and, that, and, and I know that's not a uh, foul Coach Jefferson is very pleased with because that shot obviously was missed, but now an opportunity to earn three from the strike. Freeman good on the first. Silence falls across the field house. And he gets the roll for number two. Afia Beckway back into the contest for Anoka. All, all that time in the gym, Joe, shooting free throws, pays off. You know. I know it's important. I know I can't do it. I mean, if I spend some time in the gym, well, maybe sure after a while. The Beckway for three, it's good. A big uh, Beckway, a big shot from him to cut the lead, the Coon Rapids lead to one. Well, and they, their perimeter shooting was big for them yeah. in the first contest. Take, uh, taking Palman Tate, trying to answer, but comes up short. Pry into the corner. Borchers for three. That one's good as well. Again, he continues. Uh, he missed his first attempt. Hits the second one, and there's a steal. And Beckway takes it right back in. Knocked way out of bounds. Went off of Beckway last. Yeah. That was a big defensive play for the Cardinals. But uh, they had 11 three-pointers in yeah. the first contest between the two. Five of them by Donald Pra. I think three by Padani. Borchers maybe had one. Freeman. As another. And uh, they were kind of tangled up they in the back way, back way, well, trying to may have taken a shot up high, just thinking he might get an offensive foul instead. He's called for the hold. Padani over to talk to the official about what he saw and try and keep an eye on it in the future. Into the backcourt for Belpedia. Belpedio looking for room against Borchers. Got a hand it. Nearly got the rip, but Belpedio puts it up and in. We're tied at 45. Yeah, I just like the way he stayed with it. Palmer got a piece of that pass before it got to Reeder and deflected it out of bounds. Up top, Borchers for three. Another one. Wow. He has 27. We just started that. We started the second half. He's uh, in line for a huge night. Cardinals work the perimeter to the corner for Jerry Freeman. Three pointer for Kenny Jones. That comes up just short. Freeman gets the rebound. Good look to Belpedio underneath. Second chance is in. Yeah, I like, again, like the hustle. Belpedio did a really nice job. Re realized he missed that first one, but didn't, uh, but made sure he stayed with it. He has eight. Padani all day to look at this three, and he knocks it down. Yeah, again, the defense that needs to step up. It needs to give him a look at the perimeter. Four three-pointers for Anoka in this second half already. Rebound. Bobbled but controlled. Pra down court. Borchers all alone, and that's an easy basket. Timeout. On the floor. Yeah, all of a sudden, that, and Borchers now with 29. All of a sudden, the tornado's up by six. And Coach O calling that timeout. Talk about things before he can make some, so he can make some adjustments. Obviously, see, see some things he doesn't like here. Well, teams have gone back and forth here in this second half so far. But the three-point shooting is, I mean, again, that, that's uh, been the difference in the contest. It really has.
I guess they only had four in the first half. But Seemed like more. It did. Yeah. But Borchers has five three-pointers already. So four in all of the first half. They've got four in the first four minutes of this second half. Two for Borchers, one for Padani, and one for Afia Beckway. And 29 points for Borchers, I believe his season best. He had 26 last night against Andover, and he had 49 points in the last two games combined. You could say he's hot. He's hot. Inbound goes to Freeman. Freeman trying to get through a double team and does. Numbers down court. Hatworth for three. That shot won't fall. The rebound by Reeder was falling. Throws it and gets it to Pra. Pra <laughs> slows down. Hands it off. Reeder into the corner. Beckway back up top. And they will reset the offense. Pra, three-pointer, no, had his foot on the line. Shot won't go anyway. Rebound controlled by Palmer. Hetwer pulls back for a three-pointer. That's off the mark. Borcher, or Padani, rather, down court. Pra behind the defense, drops it in. But now you see Ganoka open up their lead. Eight points now, cushion for the Tornadoes. Well, on back-to-back yeah. baskets where they've had guys all alone behind the defense. Palmer into the post for Jones, kicks it out to Hatworth. Belpedio puts it on the floor, takes it right at the big trees, gets a foul, and won't go to the line to shoot two. They're going to call this one against Trey Borchers. Long pass down court from Padani. Bra's right there. Yeah, well, and Borchers is there as well. He is well, correct. <laughs> Two guys behind the defense by 15 feet. Belpedio hits the first one clean. Second one misses. Reeder has the rebound. Belpedio is charging, but... Borchers drives, oh. gets the foul and the basket. And when you're hot, you're hot. That's third on Palmer. <laughs> and Palmer will come out, replaced by Connor Jordan. Yeah, great game for Japri so yeah. far. And that pushes it to a 10-point lead for Anoka. Full court pressure from the Tornadoes. Pra steps into the passing lane, drives against Jones, and scores. Yeah, again, just telegraph that pass and give credit to Donald Pra did a really nice job of recognizing, stepping in front of the passing lane and going in for the bucket. Belpedio, a lot of room in the corner. He hits the three, and the Cardinals needed that well, in a big they, way. They certainly did. He's into double digits. Yep. Hatward jumping the passing lane and able to save it along the sideline. Pushes it up court, and Cooper trying to get into the passing lane, collided hard with Freeman, and he will pick up his third. Jackson Young ready to check back in, and he'll replace Jerry Freeman, who took the hard hit right in front of the Cardinal bench. Jeremy Shepard coming over just to making sure he's okay. The trainer here. Jordan in the post. Nice move to his left hand, but the shot won't fall. Rebound tip taken away by Cooper. Cooper pushes it up court out of the reach of Donald Pra. And a turnover back to Coon Rapids. 
Again, they continue to try and get that player behind the defense, Coon Rapids defense. That time, a little too much on that pass. Jackson Young driving baseline, reverse layup is good. Yeah, that, and that's what they've missed here, the Cardinals, because of the fact that uh, Jackson's been in foul trouble. He has three personals, just four, his four points so far tonight. Cooper nearly lost the handle, then had it tipped away. Jordan got it to Young, down court for Jones. Bounce pass, trying <laughs> to feed Belpedio at the back door, and it was a little too far underneath the basket, and the Cardinals turned it back over. And that pass a little too tall coming back for Peyton Padani and another turnover by the Tornadoes. Coach Jefferson frustrated by that turnover. Young kicks it to the corner. Belpedio driving baseline. His pass taken away by Padani. Padani. Running the floor, now we'll slow things down. The back way puts it on the floor, gets the foul, and I believe it will be before the shot attempt. Yeah, I believe so. And it's number 10. That's uh, number four wow. against Jackson Young. Again, just uh, you know, really can't get into the flow of the game because of foul problems. Gavin Stevenson will come back in. Well, I, 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 yeah, I think it was supposed to be against Connor Jordan, not, not uh, Jackson Young. And that's and that's a big difference. That's huge. I mean, either way, it's it's it a fourth, fourth personal, right? But it, but it's a much bigger foul against number ten for the Cardinals' sake. Of course, for the Cardinals, they'd love to see that uh, maybe go against Belpedio well, since he yeah. has no fault. That's that would be, yeah, let's pick one. Now, there let, is, uh, there's let, definitely let some, pick one. some discussion. And now they are going to give it to uh, Jackson Hetwer. Okay, he's, so got, he's got broad shoulders. Yeah. He can handle it. Oh, he yeah, shrugs. Absolutely. He shrugs. Okay, I'll take it. I'll take one for the team. Well, and that's good because that, that takes yeah, that it, foul away from Jackson Young. And again, I think that's number one on. It is. Uh, might at most number two against well, Jackson one, Hatworth. One on the scoreboard. Well, I, I don't know that they've adjusted it on the scoreboard. That's Even if it's two. Said. Right. It's oh, a better it's situation. Huge. Reader, a quick jump shot, goes off the back of the iron. Hetworth with the rebound. Well, they haven't adjusted it. Jones into the corner for Stevenson up top. Connor Jordan puts it on the floor, kicks it back out, Jones. And now Hetwer looking for room. Underneath, Stevenson drops it off, Jordan off the glass and in. Yeah, Stevenson again, just a heads up play, realized he wouldn't have an opportunity to score, but saw Jordan right underneath the basket, a little bounce pass, cuts the lead to five. In the corner, Jefferson for three, that's short. Padani, an uncontested rebound, Borchers for three. That one won't go, but a Beckway tips it home. Uh, Beckway just doing a better job underneath offensively of the boards. The fight for that miss leads back to seven for Anoka. That pass got away from Hetworth. Stevenson nearly controlled it, but lost it out of bounds. Now for the Cardinals, number five, Jerry Frank. Just a little miscommunication in the corner. Borchers into the corner. Jefferson bobbled it, taken it away by Hetworth. Stevenson on the run against Borchers. Borchers reaches in, gets the steal, gets it ahead to Mackay Jefferson. Jefferson tried to go behind the back, but it's behind the intended target, Padani, and out of bounds.
Freeman to the corner. Stevenson, a little fake, drives to the lane and then got tripped up. No foul. Panani the other way will slow things down. Ten minutes remaining in the second half. Tornado's up by seven. Borchers with 32 points so far. Ellis gets it back for Padani up top. Borchers. And they'll swing it around. Ellis for three. It's good. Nothing but net there. And a nice job just working the perimeter by the Tornadoes. Yeah, and that Dre that's Ellis his, that's just, his first again, point to just, the game. A, just a freshman, but yeah. he, he was a bigger factor in the first meeting, but he is a nice athlete. He's going to be a good player. And now uh, Beckway went down hard after the foul and a little slow to get up. Yeah, he hit, I look like he hit uh, his head hard on the court. Hopefully he's okay. Yeah, I hate to see oh. injuries of any sort to any athlete, I certainly hope. You will be okay if not tonight in the very near future. Yeah, he's able to get up and walk off yep. okay, but he's in good hands with he's in phenomenal hands. Jeremy. And so Ryan Tat yeah, he just Tatkenhorst will will come in to take his spot. And there you see it and sliding right to the feet of Dave Emmy. And uh, Tatkenhorst comes in and gets the free throws. First one won't go. Able to hit the second, and then he'll check right back out. That's what you called being specialized in yeah, your in exactly. your skill set. 11 point lead for Anoka. That pass almost got away from Freeman. It really made a great job receiving it, not double dribbling, not getting uh, on the sideline. Freeman, a three pointer is good. Uh, again, they need that. Anoka is starting Freeman's start got 15. Borchers for three again. This one well short. Rebound out of bounds. It'll be Cardinal Ball. Last touch by Donald Pra. The hand fighting. Well, yeah, he looked like he held. He looked like he held Stevenson a little bit. Well, Stevenson, Stevenson trying, held him too. And, and then after that, it looks like he <laughs> held him after that, trying to fight for that ball. Oh, it's great. It's only illegal if they call it. It's exactly. Jackson Young. Working against Padani, right side for Kenny Jones, and here's Jerry Freeman. You got to give Anoka a lot of credit. Credit their tempo and uh, intensity on defense has yeah. been impressive. They, it has been. Uh, Coach Jeffers has done a really nice job with this program. Young looking for room against Padani. Finds the left side of the lane, shot won't go. Rebound tipped out of bounds by Connor Jordan. Reader driving, lays it up and in. Back to a 10 point lead. At just his fourth point of the contest. Oh. 
Another instance of a player taking his eyes off the ball at the last second yep. and getting past him, and the Cardinals turn it over once more. Bree Palmer back in the game. He has 14 so far tonight. Borchers looking for room, will drive instead. The finger roll off the glass won't go. Reader had a chance at the rebound, instead gets the foul, and will go to the line to shoot two. It's going to go against Kenny Jones. That'll be Kenny's second. Fourth personal on the Cardinals, but as you mentioned, it's a uh, shooting foul. Yeah, Reader had a tough night. He's had a tough night from the line as well. Jordan and Belpedio back on the floor for the Cardinals. See Stevenson and Jones back at the bench. Oh, how do you not, how do you not call a foul there? You throw a player to the floor. What is that right in I, front of the official? Well, they're going to call a foul. The question is, how how is that not a technical? Well, yeah. I mean, I he had position. Fighting. That's a tackle. That's, that should be a technical. No, they did not I mean, call. They're both they, okay, they did call a foul. It was the first of the game on, on, on Donald Prob. Prob yeah, but, but he's fortunate it was not called the technical. It, it should have been called a technical. Inbound goes to Freeman. Cardinals trail by 10, a little more than seven minutes remaining in the second half. They led by 14 in the first half. Jackson Young underneath. Able to score. Now Cardinals are going to call a timeout with 7.03 remaining in this second half. An eight point lead for the Tornadoes. But yeah, you're right, Joe, that he was very fortunate he did not get called for a technical. I mean, I mean it was as, it was as obvious as obvious can be. Well, I don't pretend to be a basketball expert or, or a rules aficionado, but however, I've never seen something that aggressive no, not I, get called the technical. I, 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 don't, I don't pretend to be an expert either, but it's just, I mean, it, it, it was pretty obvious. He threw him to the floor. And I'm sure it was out of frustration because both of them were, were, oh, yeah, they were, were hand checking. Well, and, and there's yeah. been so much of that that yep. has, uh, gone uncalled all game long. But but when the subject does come up, we are a little bit biased. No. No one would ever say that. We're not the worst I've heard though. No, I but we, we, some, we sometimes can be. We can, but be. yeah, but we're pretty, we're pretty for the most part, pretty fair and even. But we can, as long be. as it's in favor so, of yeah, the Cardinals. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so true. Ellis for three from the corner won't go. But Danny has the rebound back to Reader. Reader thought about stepping into a three, instead just baits. The defense to come Palmer. to him. No, well, it's going to go against Jordan. Oh, could, okay. So, so Jordan's that will be Jordan's fourth. Inbound goes to Reader underneath, puts it up and in. delay of game warning given to the Anoka Tornadoes. Tornadoes making it hard for the Cardinals to get the ball in play and then they come up with a steal. Reader can't get it to go and Foul's going to go against Reeder underneath as he and Young were tangled up for the rebound. That's his third. His third. 
sixth team foul on the Tornadoes. Jackson Hetwer back in for Coon Rapids. They need to get him going the way yeah. they had him going at the start of the first half. Nice little give and go. Jerry Freeman into the corner. Belpedio for three. It's off the mark. Padani has the rebound for Anoka. Yeah, that was way off the mark. I mean, I like the thought. Had him open. Had the look. Hetwer forcing Padani away from the rim. He's able to drive. His shot won't go. Reader just goes over everybody for the rebound. Ellis for three. That one's good. Big three-point shot to increase the lead to 13 for Anoka. Tenth three-pointer of the game for the Tornadoes. Japri Palmer at the other end runs into a wall named Reagan Reader and kicks it out for Young. Will pick and roll. Palmer gets the foul and will go to the line to shoot two. And this is going to go against Afi Abekwe. That's his second. That's the seventh team foul on the tornado. Six of their 10 three-pointers have been in this second half, helping them to the 13-point lead. Japri Palmer misses them both. The rebound by Peyton Padani. Oh, it was Padani who had 49 points in the last two yeah, games. Yeah, he had 26. No, he had 26. And 26. Oh, oh wow. That one was shot up to the moon. Got the contact, and he's got a chance for a three-point play. Yeah, that, that, was a that was a pretty basket. He's, he's able to get that rainbow arc on it. Let's throw up a prayer, see if it goes, and it did. And it's number four against Palmer. <laughs> but Annie able to finish. And a 16-point lead. Freeman quickly to the other end, tried to hand it off. Instead, it's Borchers going back the other way. And Padani with the finish. Coach is going to call a timeout. An 18-point lead for the Tornadoes. And Padani with 19 points on the evening. 19 from him and 32 from Borchers. When you can get 50 points out of a, a duo, that certainly yeah. helps your, out your, your chances. It absolutely does. Cardinals had five three-pointers in the first half, just two here in the second half. And still, again, Hetwer had 11 points in like the first five minutes yeah. of the contest, and he has not scored since. Nope. Dupree Palmer will stay on the floor with his four fouls. 5-11 remaining in the contest, and the Cardinals need a huge run right now. The Beckway jumping into the passing lane and tipping it away out of bounds. I mean, I mean that's taunt. It looks like, to me, that was taunt. He just clapped in the face of Jerry Freeman. Donald Fan. Prow will check back in. Coon Rapids fans calling for uh, for him to be teed up, but officials didn't see it that way. Five, 
Inbound goes to Freeman along the end line. Howard down the left side. Picked up by Padani as he moves across midcourt. Pick and roll, Japri Palmer runs into Reeder, kicks it back out to Young, cross court, Hetworth. Up top, Palmer, and now Belpedio. Cardinals will pass it looking for an opportunity. Palmer's shot won't go, second chance, he'll get the foul on Reeder and go to the line to shoot two. That'll be number four against yep. Reagan Reeder. Well, you know, you, you look at uh, Reagan Reader leading score with the, just the six points, but Anoka obviously didn't don't need his point, haven't been needing his points yet so far tonight. In so. both contests yeah. against the Cardinals, yep. two of his lowest uh, point totals of the season. Well below his average. Palmer misses them both. Padani has the rebound easily for Anoka. Tornadoes extend the pressure. Ellis to Reeder in the corner. Tornadoes are going to be in no hurry. Nope. Underneath, Ellis turns and scores. Ellis has eight. 20 point lead. Three pointer for Hatwer is good. They needed that. They did, well, they certainly and they did. They need several more. They, they definitely do. Borcher's looking to answer. The shot is short. Panani right there to clean it up. Yeah, just, you know, no no defense underneath before the opportunity to get the rebound. Japri Palmer at the other end, blocked by Reeder. Reeder blocks Young and now starts the transition. Numbers down court. Borcher's at the back door, easily scores. Capri Palmer fighting against Reeder. We'll get the foul yeah, and go to the line to shoot two. Taking Plum and Tate back into the game for. Coon Rapids. Mason Holheisel will check back in for Anoka. Help the Tornadoes maintain their size advantage on the floor. Yeah, he's 6'5. He's got some size to him. May not be as tall, but plays big underneath. Palmer able to hit this one. Kai Jefferson back in as well for the Tornadoes. Cole Heisel goes up and gets the rebound off the miss. It's a 20 point lead for the Tornadoes. Donald Pra long into the corner for Borchers and tried to throw it back. Freeman got a piece of it, but Minoka will have an opportunity to reset the offense as Kenny Jones checks in for the Cardinals. Borchers steps up, little floater won't fall. Plum and Tate has the rebound. Three pointer for Hatwar is good. He was from way outside. He just buried that one. He has 17. So, taking Plum and Tate's going to be around for a while. Yes. It's a lot of name. Yeah. He's just I'm a thinking sophomore. TPT. TPT, I, I'm okay with that, if, providing he's okay with that. <laughs> Correct. I mean, it, doesn't, it doesn't really matter what we say. Oop. And a little miscommunication by the Tornadoes, and they turn it over. But uh, it would take... <laughs> would take a lot. A lot. Down 17 yeah, with two and a half to yeah, play. Absolutely. Young will drive, kick it to the corner for Freeman. Finds his way around and Holheisel with the block. 
Ends up out of bounds. It'll stay Cardinal ball. Made his way around Donald Bra, but then uh, Hoheisel blocked it away. Borchers deflects that one out of bounds. Hetwer inbounds to Freeman. Jackson Young kicks it out. Hetwer looking for three more. This one's short. Borchers has the long rebound. Freeman got into the passing lane, gets the takeaway. Young. And now in the corner, Jones for three. That won't go. Freeman has the rebound. Up top, Young will drive instead, and it's tied up by Borchers. Possession arrow favors the Tornadoes. Ellis slips through a double team, gets it ahead for Donald Pra. Pra spins in the lane and gets fouled underneath. We'll go to the line to shoot two. It's going to be number four against Jackson Young. The second fourth foul he's received. Yeah, yeah he got a reprieve on the first one. Pry at the line, able to get the roll. Ryan Tatkenhorse is going to check back in for the Tornadoes. Pry hits them both. Jibinar also back on the floor for Adoka. Young spinning against Jibinar, lost the handle. Praise Jibinar comes up with it. Had a little trouble with it, stripped, but then steals it right back, takes it to the hole. That won't go. Hoheisel able to tip it home. Yeah, Hoheisel did a nice job of just tying him his jump. The came off the rim perfectly for him for the tip in. Three pointer for Freeman in and out. Hoheisel couldn't control. Jibinar can. Jibinar. Weaving through Cardinal defenders. Takes it to the other end, kicks it out. Tatkenhorse for three. That won't go, and it hit that new uh, shot clock yep. you were talking about. And that is out of bounds. Yes, it is. Now, ah, what a new wrinkle it will yeah. add to high school basketball next year. It'll be interesting. Kenny Jones for three, that won't go. Tatkin Horst has the rebound. Was trying to get it back to Ellis, but that pass tipped away out of bounds. Yeah, you mentioned the, the Blaine slowdown when in the playoffs, that was uh, an Aaron Wilford coached. Yes, it, yes it was. Coon Rapids squad going up against it. And I don't remember what it was, it was a two, uh, Blaine was like a two seed, Coon Rapids was a seven. Right. And they figured the only chance they had is to slow it way, way down. And they and did. Boy, did they. It was like 10 to 8 at the half. One of the weirdest games yes. I've ever witnessed. Stevenson for three from the corner. That won't go. TPT had a chance at the rebound. But Tatkin Horace has it instead. And now Jimidor into the front court. We'll hand it off. We're down to 20 seconds left. And the Tornadoes more than comfortable with just running this clock out. Dre Ellis shaking hands with Kenny Jones before the buzzer even sounds. Yep. And uh, you know, coming in, you would have you would have said that Anoka was was the favorite team, the stronger team on paper. Certainly, a team that was uh, had a little more momentum on their side. But uh, after the first five minutes, looked like the Cardinals were 
going to turn the tables on them. But uh, give Anoka credit for staying the course, coming back, and and scoring a relatively convincing victory. They, they did, and you know, and the, and the Cardinals were frustrated. I think, and, and we talked to Coach Jefferson at the at the half, and you know, he was pleased with the fact that they did respond there to go up with that one point lead at the break. But they certainly had a great second half and increased that lead to get the victory. That'll be the tenth win of the year for Anoka, and that will. Uh, Drop the Cardinals, I believe, to 5 and 12. 15. No, 5 and 15, correct. Yeah, it's uh, it's been a rough rough road, especially in the last month for for the Cardinals, but there's always tomorrow. There is and always And everybody tomorrow. makes the playoffs. So Absolutely. Even us. Yeah, we make the playoffs. We oh, will have hopefully. playoff girls hockey playoffs coming up on Saturday. A CTN Light production against the Rogers Royals, number four versus number five. Right, well, Should be go. exciting. We'll be back to see uh, some basketball uh, in the very near future as yes. well. But that is going to do it for this edition of CTN Sports. Again, the final score and over 88. Coon Rapids 67. I want to thank everybody out there for joining us and continuing to support everything we do here at CTN for the entire crew, including Howie Shapiro. I'm Joe Young. Saying goodnight.